Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 23rd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Scottsdale, Arizona. Netflix made yet another interesting security tool open source. This security tool focuses on mobile device management. What it is, it's a web application that your users can use to review their device's security posture. It does integrate with a number of different mobile device management systems. So if your user is connected to one of these systems, then this tool will go out pull the information from that system and then present it to the users with suggestions on how to improve the security for their device. Now, they do support Google's mobile device management. They also support YAMF for Macs. That's a very popular system for iOS. And then also Landesk for Windows. And the number of different configurations being reviewed here are the basics essentially, like disk encryption, like screen lock, is the device jailbroken or rooted? Now, unlike some systems that then force the user to make changes, this system just suggests that the user makes changes to the device and leaves it really up to the user to then make the actual change. So there's more control with the user, but the user is informed as to what's wrong with their device. Overall, this looks really interesting and Netflix made it available as a dockerized application, so it shouldn't really be that terribly difficult to install for anybody. And then we got yet another interesting blog by Alexander Klink, uh, this time about how Firefox uses intermediate certificate authority certificates. The problem here is that if you go to an HTTPS website, what you usually receive from the website is the website certificate and the signing certificate that was used to sign this particular website certificate. Now your browser will validate the signing certificate using one of the root certificates that are pre-installed with the operating system or the browser. What Firefox does is that it caches these intermediate certificate authority certificates. Nothing really wrong with that and uh, it actually helps sometimes because some websites incorrectly install certificates and the result is that they will only deliver their certificate, they will not deliver the intermediate signing certificate and as a result you wouldn't be able to load that site. However, an attacker could use this to figure out that you visited a site that delivered a certain signing certificate because, well, uh, you're able to load the content even if the signing certificate is not present. So someone could use that potentially to track a user by creating a sign with a very specific signing certificate and then use that to check if the user already visited that website. The attack isn't terribly practical, I have to say. It is not that easy to get a signing certificate in the first place and in order to track individual users you would need a different signing certificate for each user but it could definitely be used to narrow down the sites a user visited in the past. Other browsers typically don't cache these signing certificates but they sometimes go out and pick up these signing certificates themselves. What happens is with your website certificates there's typically a URL included in the certificate where the signing certificate can be found. So that's not a workaround uh, for these missing signing certificates. So overall, I rate this as a nice curiosity, not a real threat to privacy at this point. And since I talked about uh, DNS cache poisoning earlier here in class in Scottsdale, well, uh, there's a new tool to make some of these DNS attacks a little bit easier. Not exactly DNS cache poisoning, the tool is called Judas DNS. This tool would be installed as a proxy between the attacked user, the victim, and uh, the DNS server that this victim is using. So the tool has access to the full DNS queries and then can dynamically with a fairly neat rule language replace DNS responses. So by default, it really just acts as a proxy and it forwards DNS requests and responses. 
but specific requests you may then intercept and return different or rewritten replies. Pretty neat and probably useful for a pen test here and there. It's not really sort of DNS cache poisoning in the sense that the tool isn't just blindly sending replies. It does have to be sort of a proxy, a man in the middle between the victim and the legitimate DNS server. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.